Kyle Rittenhouse faces multiple charges for shooting and killing two people and wounding a third during last year's riots in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He maintains it was self-defense. The jury, the jury is expected to begin deliberating his fate after Monday's closing arguments. But long before the facts of the case were even known, those on the left were quick to deliver their verdict. Watch. Rittenhouse is basically what you would have had in a school shooter. Cross state lines to supposedly protect property? No, he was going out to shoot people. And it's not good that a 17-year-old vigilante, arguably a domestic terrorist, picked up a rifle, drove to a different state to shoot people. The vast majority of protests in Kenosha have been peaceful, and the violence has come from an outside Trump supporter, Kyle Rittenhouse, the armed teenage vigilante. Uh, shooting wildly, running around, uh, acting like uh, rent a cop. Radicalized by Trumpism, took his AR-15 to Kenosha and became a killer. Hmm. Meanwhile, Rittenhouse's mother slamming President Biden, accusing him of using her son to score political points. I was angry. President Biden don't know my son whatsoever, and he's not a white supremacist, he's not a racist, and he did that for the votes, and I was so angry for a while at him, and what he did to my son, he defamed him. Oh, Kaylee. It's amazing. Look, we're very careful in this business to use the word alleged, mm -hmm. to use the word accused. That's what journalists do. You don't jump to a conclusion. What we just heard from the media was appalling and it bears repeating. Kyle Rittenhouse was analogized to a school shooter. He was called the enemy. He was called deeply racist before the facts were out. Actually, there were some facts out. You know what those facts were? A video that seemed to show him acting in self-defense, but the media could not help themselves. President Joe Biden could not help himself back when he was a candidate, putting this young man's picture, the 17-year-old boy's picture, in an ad talking about white supremacy. It's deeply irresponsible, but you know why they did it? Because Kyle Rittenhouse fit a narrative for them. An MSNBC guest said the quiet part out loud. He said this, Kyle Rittenhouse is a white, Trump-supporting, MAGA-loving, Blue Lives Matter, social media partisan because of that and that fact alone the media did mm. what you just watched and that is not journalism what you saw that is defamation and Julie Kaylee mentions the care mm -hmm. with which people in this industry in the journalism industry are to behave are to speak are to write when it yeah. comes to things like this we have for you on a full screen now CBS which ended up deleting this original tweet stating that Rittenhouse testified he quote murdered two men. Again, they've now deleted it, but someone put it up, and that's the level of that, to Kaylee's point, the yeah. journalism, quote, stands at this moment with this 18-year-old defendant who was innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, I mean, basically, they're judging, and they are not the jury, and just like you just mentioned, you know, the word alleged, that is like journalism 101, mm -hmm. and CBS is supposed to be, you know, a flagstaff of, like, serious <laughs> fact-checking right. journalism, and, and so they use the word murdered, which, of course, once again, you are not deemed a murderer until a jury says so. Um, you're an alleged shooter. You are an alleged uh, a suspect, but you are not a murderer until a jury decides. But I think that the, the problem with this is that the public has made their decision. They've convicted this guy. Mm -hmm. And the, the sad part is that the media has to keep people straight. It is our job to say, look, he has not been convicted yet. While the whole public may think that this guy went there to intentionally kill two people or more, um, that's not for us to decide. That's for a jury. And the media is very irresponsible. There, there should be um, penalties. There should be punishment for Absolutely. whoever put out that mm -hmm. tweet. I'd like to hear about whoever at CBS made such a mistake getting, you know, getting, having to be held responsible for that. Tommy, I love Julie's point so much where the media is supposed to be the standard that the rest of us can look to yeah. for objectivity, <laughs> right? But unfortunately, it's not. And of course, Hollywood piling on as well. We have Rosanna Arquette calling him a murderer, to Julie's point. Padma Lakshmi, Lakshmi tweeting out that it's time for America to redefine what it means to be a, quote, promising young man. And even actor Dave Bautista tweeting out an expletive about, again, this defendant who is innocent until proven guilty. Mm. 
Facts don't matter to the mainstream media, only the narrative and only the agenda. And it's sad that we've come to that place, but we certainly have. They have framed this young man from the get-go and already made their decision about him. But let's also reframe this. Let's imagine that Kyle Rittenhouse instead was a BLM or Antifa supporter, a member of one of those two groups, and he was being attacked by Trump supporters or being ambushed by Trump supporters. I think the media's tune would be quite different. And you use, they use those terms about Trump and being a Blue Lives Matter supporter, and they use those because their Trump derangement syndrome is so deep and so thick that they can't get beyond that. And all they see is someone who is going out and questioning the narrative of these mostly peaceful BLM and Antifa riots that we saw for an entire summer long. There was no outrage about those. There was no outrage about the violence, the vandalism, the destruction, and the burning of cities that was occurring in cities for an entire summer, if not more. And I know, Emily, you well know that in Portland and Seattle, those things continued on for months after the, the George Floyd riots. But there was no outrage from the media about that and the damage it caused. But they are going after him just like they've gone after Trump, just like they went after Nick Sandman, and just like they'll go after every single conservative if it helps benefit their agenda and their narrative. And Raymond, the tragedy of this, it can't be overstated. Two lives were lost, one life altered forever, in addition to the defendant and his family and everyone else involved. So to the point about seeing this through a compassionate lens for what it is instead of demonizing versus, you know, black and white, all, all of a sudden someone is automatically guilty. And people have influence. People's words have certain power, which is why we're highlighting today those that do the influence they have on the public, on public perception of what's going on there. We're going to play for you a montage of members of the media criticizing the defendant, including the fact that he cried on the stand, showing emotionality about the, 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 again, the depths of the tragedy that this is. Watch. That acting job of the crying, I can't even look at it. One of the worst acting jobs I've ever seen. This is white privilege on steroids. Rittenhouse testified that after he shot all of these people, he approached the cops and told them that He'd been involved in a shooting, and the officers told him, be careful so that you don't get pepper sprayed. Raymond. Hmm. You don't know where to begin with those clips, but let's start with innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And some of my confreres in the media, I hope everybody's listening, because look, I thought everybody was opposed these days to mass incarceration of juveniles. But I guess that narrative gets thrown out when it's this boy involved. But when you burrow down and look at the facts, we have to put this media narrative in a context. The reason you see everyone in the media so determined to convict this this boy is because they went out on a limb very early on before Rittenhouse ever showed up. Remember, it was the media and their narratives about Kenosha and the Jacob Blake shooting. They fanned the flames of Jacob Blake, which they claimed was a, a, a killing of a black man by the cops. Turned out he threatened the cops. He did a slashing motion and they shot him. I mean, the, the Justice Department determined that. So this whole scene, the riot that Rittenhouse was walked into was in some ways fomented by, not caused by, but fomented by the media. So they're continuing this narrative of trying to convict this boy. But when you, when you break through this, and Emily, you all have watched this case far closer than I, but in what I've watched and read of this prosecution, their facts are scant. They should never have brought a prosecution against this kid. I mean, it looks like it was a clear case of, of uh, self-defense. And as far as Joy Behar, when someone's having a panic, attack about something they've been through, chances are it's not going to look like Nicole Kidman's close-up. That's all. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.